Welcome to TechBrothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load JSON file to Azure SQL database table in Azure Data Factory. So we will be following all baby steps here and at least you can see everything what we are doing here. So first of all, I do not have any SQL database here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and create a new database here. So go to databases here and create and then uh, we will provide uh, some information for this uh, database. Uh, so first of all, you will be selecting Azure subscription, uh, then you will be selecting resource group. Uh, in my case, the uh, TechBrows IT or G is a resource group. Uh, then uh, you will be providing the name of the database. Uh, so let's call this one a uh, TechBrothers IT DB. Okay. So this is available and then uh, next is a uh, create a server. So to connect to this database, uh, we need a server name. Uh, what we are going to do, we are going to say TechBrothers IT server. So that's the uh, name for my server and uh, now you will provide uh, the username so I'm gonna call it a TB user now you will provide uh, the password for that and uh, then provide uh, another password to confirm it you're using the same password so hit OK and uh, next uh, what we are gonna do here now we will go to the configuration database I do not want to create a database with a lot of uh, CPUs and memory I'm gonna go with basic uh, and I would like to pay only few dollars so you see right there 4.99 so hit apply and now we are going to create a database so hit create and meanwhile it's creating a, let me show you the file so go to the portal and it's working we can go and go to the main and here is our blob storage in the blob storage i have containers and in the container i have one container called the input in this container i have this file customer.json hit uh, edit uh, and you will be able to see the values uh. so you see right there where I have first name last name date of birth and all that uh, so I can use uh, I can uh, load these values uh, values so I can uh, uh, do multiple things here let me go ahead and uh, just I'm gonna make a copy of this uh, so we can go and create our table now uh, I'm not gonna connect with this server I'm gonna connect with another one but uh, meanwhile I can uh, prepare my query so we'll call it uh, create a db.customer a table db dot customer and uh, I can do ID integer and uh, I can say identity one comma one so when I load this uh, data to the this table uh, this ID column will be auto populated now I can go and provide other column names uh, such as uh, F first name maybe instead of uh, F name I will say first name uh, and then I will call it worker hundred and uh, then uh, I will go last name okay so worker hundred as well and uh, now let me study date of birth so I can uh, date of birth and I can say date okay and uh, the last column will be region so and uh, that can be also work or 100 and that's it now we are all good here and uh, what we are going to do our table definition is ready once uh, we have uh, our database what we are going to do we are going to create this uh, table now we can close this file this is our JSON file that we need to load to the table I'm gonna go back here and see if our database is ready click here and the deployment is still in progress it's almost two minutes now it should be completing very soon here you can see that our server is ready and now our database is being in process of creating so we can it is accepted now the next step it is it should be it just completing quickly so Meanwhile, uh, this is still working. Uh, what we can do, let me refresh uh, and if it shows us a database uh, name, server name here, so we can take that and uh, still in progress. And uh, yeah, I, I ha we have to wait here. You know, if we click here, uh, it's, uh, yep, uh, it's uh, still like, a, yep, it is shown as server name. So we can probably work with the server and database is still not uh, ready so if I go here I'm gonna do one thing I'm gonna go to firewall and networks here and I'm gonna say allow Azure services and resources to access this server that means if uh, Azure Data Factory want to access this uh, uh, resource uh, they it should be able to do that uh, now it is all good and I'm gonna go to the my SSMS that's on my laptop and I'm gonna connect to this uh, Azure SQL server that is that has our database so, so we are going to connect to that and uh, it's asking a uh, username and password I provided that uh, it's asking me to sign in uh, I'm going to provide sign in information and now we signed in successfully and uh, we are going to hit OK and now we are all good uh, click uh, on uh, database go to TechBrowser IT DB and copy this uh, 
definition and we are going to go to this uh, new query now our scope has changed to tech result it as i open the new query after clicking on uh, this uh, database um, create the table come on so i should be actually executing uh, instead of uh, creating uh, so execute and uh, the table is created now we are going to go and uh, select uh, star from uh, table and there should be no data looks good though and now what we are going to do we are going to go back to the azure data factory here and uh, here we will create a new pipeline go to the pipelines here new pipeline and i'm going to call this uh, pl load json to table okay now we are going to bring our favorite activity that's copy activity with tons of features uh, and uh, uh, that uh, really helps uh, loading different type of data sources and to the different destinations. So, so we are going to go to the source here, and now I'm selecting a data set. Uh, I'm going to go to new. As my file is sitting Azure Blob, I'm going to select Azure Blob Storage here. Next uh, is uh, my file is JSON, CSV, binary, or whatever. In my case, it's a JSON. So I selected the JSON here, and now I'm uh, going to call this name JSON input. And now what we will do. Here, linked service. So I can create a new linked service. Uh, go to subscription, then uh, your storage account, and uh, that's it. That's all you need. So I'm going to call the, this LNK. Okay, test, test successful, okay, create, create. Now our linked service is created. So now we can navigate to our file, hit browse, go to the input folder, and here is our file, customer.json. Okay, now it's all good. We need uh, from a connection or store, import the schema and hit OK. Now, there is not a whole lot we are going to do here. Uh, we are going to leave everything as it, as it is for now. We are going to go to the sync now. And I'm going to create a connection. It's called Azure SQL Database. So right there. And now we have SQL. And I'm going to call it uh, underscore JSON. Now I'm going to create a new linked service. In the new link service, I'm going to select the subscription. I'm going to select the server name, and then I'm selecting the database name. Why is it giving me every time uh, nowadays I when I work with these guys, it's always uh, take some time to load the database. That shouldn't be case though. Let me refresh. Still, it's loading. So I'm going to cancel this guy bring it back so I will create a new service and the link service select my subscription select my server and then select my database so when I tried next the second time it just go pop up right there so tech reside TDB and now I'm gonna provide a TB user and provide the password and I'm gonna call this one Yes, on just uh, for our my reference, so I know that with what it is our uh, test is uh, successful, and uh, now our link service is created. And here I'm gonna go and select our table, so it is a customer table import. Yes, let's do that and see how you do. And now, finally, what we are gonna do, we are gonna go to mapping. Uh, in my previous videos, I never actually went to mapping if uh, we are loading in the table with the same names. Uh, you know from the input or source uh, and but in this case uh, i would like to go there and take a look and i would like to import schemas because our file is not a csv file uh, or it's not a binary file and all that so this is a json file so we need to import the schema and the, when we import the schema then we can map our columns so if you see right there uh, first name here it does not know which column it need to go because we have changed the last uh, uh, first name column there so here it was f name here it is first name and then uh, we have uh, another column call it last name date of birth is same because i didn't change it and uh, the last one is region as well so if you see here i am not mapping id column to any column because that's auto identity column should be increment automatically and we should be all good now hit the debug and let's see what happened now go to our uh, database here and uh, then uh, select start from customer and uh, see beautiful so it loaded uh, 100 records because our json file has uh, 100 records now you can see that it converted very uh, nicely so all these of uh, date of birth they got converted correctly 
and uh, we have a region uh, and first name and last name and everything came okay, uh, just fine uh, let's go back to our uh, um, data factory here and we can see right there so you can click on this uh, glasses icon uh, and then you can see that it read 100 uh, uh, records and uh, loaded to the uh, SQL uh, so you can see right there uh, your blob storage is US uh, and uh, you have a uh, your SQL uh, that's where it loaded uh, number of the I use and all that so you're gonna get more information if you like and uh, this is all good so this is how you will uh, take your JSON file and uh, load to the table and in the last video I showed you how you can convert uh, your JSON file to the CSV file uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you learned something out of this and uh, please go ahead and subscribe my channel and I will see you guys uh, in next video